Hi everyone, today I'm going to play with a new fountain pen. It's the Noodler's Flex Pen and it has a flexible nib. And that's something I've been wanting to try for a little while to, uh, to play with nibs that are a bit more flexible to get some line variation. So for the Noodler's Flex Pen, I got the, um, the demo one, which is uh, basically a demonstrator where you ha it's all clear and so you can see the color of the ink inside. You can fill up the whole body with the piston, which is great because that way it contains a lot of ink. And then you can also uh, unscrew the clip that's attached to the cap. And that way if you don't like having clips on your pen, then you, you have the option to do so. Now, it's a common thing that some of the plastics that are made with vegetable elements, I'm not even quite sure what they're made out of, but they are notoriously stinky. Basically, I read everywhere that it's a great pen, but it's very smelly, and they were not lying. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be so strong. So it doesn't bother some people. I don't particularly like it, but I also read somebody saying that they had put it in a Ziploc bag with a dryer sheet uh, for about 24 hours. So I thought I would give it a try and it does, it does help. But now it's like over sweet smelling. So make sure you get um, a dryer sheet that you actually enjoy smelling. <laughs> Find a scent that you like. So it's been, um, you know, now a um, couple weeks, I think, something like that. And the smell is going away, luckily. So it's really not bad. I mean, I, if I actually put the pen up to my nose and sniff it, then I can still smell some of it, but just using it, it doesn't bother me. I can't smell it anymore. So that's great news. Be patient. So I'm gonna fill this pen with a Noodler's ink and it's the Black Swan Australian Roses. I bought it to try it as well. So I'm gonna try them both at the same time. If you're not familiar with the Noodler's inks, just remember that the bottles are filled all the way to the brim, like all the way. So be very careful <laughs> not to spill any because it can be very messy. So to fill up your pen, all you have to do is just push the piston all the way towards the nib and then dip the nib into the ink and then screw the piston or unscrew it, you know, all the way up and you'll have your ink uh, filling the body of the pen, not all of it, but a good amount. So just writing uh, with a regular handwriting, it's a really nice pen. I like it very much. And then um, because it's a flex pen, when you start pushing on the nib, the time's separate and it releases more ink. So you can see that the ink really kind of uh, puddles a little bit, but it, it dries pretty quickly. I guess it depends on the ink and the paper you use. But I must say I have to push quite hard to get a wider line and if I push too hard then it's gonna railroad so the ink's not gonna come out at all so you gotta find a sweet spot how wide you want your lines to be you can't get them to be super wide and uh, whenever you um, you want to widen them um, you have to push quite a lot now if you don't push too hard there's not going to be any railroading. It's it seems to be a uh, pretty nice the ink flow is not, is nice. I wanted to compare um, the width and the flexibility of the nib with a G nib that you use with a dip pen, and it's uh, a whole different story. It's the G nib gets very very thin lines, and when you push on it, you don't have to apply much force at all and it just um, widens your lines very, very easily. Now, the reason why I want to have a flexible nib with my fountain pen is uh, for portability. You know, I, if you want to go out and about and do some ink drawings on the go, it's much harder to use a dip pen and an ink bottle rather than just your filled up fountain pen. So that's why I'm on the lookout for something good. And I think I've found something great that you'll see in the upcoming videos. So to do an actual test, I will actually draw something because it's great to draw lines on your paper and all, but you can't really get a good sense of how a tool works if you're not actually using it for what it's intended to, uh, to be used for. So I decided to do a series of master studies of the French artist Jacques Callot, 
who did a bunch of illustrations that are quite nice. I really like them. I like his style. I like the lines he uses. And so I think, you know, not only it, will it be good for me to test the, the tools, but also it's great. It's going to be a great practice because I'm still learning this medium and, and how to draw the lines that will look good for, for my subject. So just doing a bunch of those drawings, you know, it's going to be repetitive, but I think, you know, it's going to teach me a lot. So Jacques Callot drew a series of pretty fun looking characters and I thought they would be fun uh, to, to draw. So this one is called Dwarf Playing String Instrument. And I was not going to start drawing straight with the ink. So I sketched it first with my mechanical pencil. Then I uh, lightened the lines. I lined it and then I shaded it with hatching mostly and cross hatching in some areas. What I like with Jacques Callot's drawings is that he has some variation in his lines. And uh, that's another reason why I picked um, his artwork. So the inking was a very good challenge. It was quite tough because first I had to pay attention, you know, I was copying um, a piece by another artist. So I wanted to try to make sure that it looked accurate. But I was also using an unfamiliar tool, um, trying to learn how to use the flex nib um, and try to find the right angles to get the effects that I wanted. So it was pretty tricky. And the tricky part also was the fact that you do have to apply a good amount of force for the times to separate and so that you can have line variation. So it's pretty awkward and you can tell what the final result is. Uh, it's kind of an awkward looking drawing. I like it. I think it's fun, but I definitely have some practice uh, to do. Yeah, my, in some areas, my lines are really terrible, but... Uh, but I did really enjoy uh, drawing it and I'm looking forward to draw more with different pens. Now for the ink, I love this color. I think it's simply beautiful. It shades, so depending on um, the flow of the ink, you know, like if I have thicker lines, there's more ink coming out. So it stays darker than where there's less ink. And I really like that effect. I love that shade of color. I think it's really neat. So I'm looking forward to using it again and again. <laughs> So I first tried it on a sketchbook that I like using with ink, but fine liners using fountain pens with it, uh, liquid ink with it. Didn't work very well because it makes the ink feather. Uh, it's just um, not the right paper for more liquid inks. So this sketchbook is the Stillman and Burn Better series. And um, even though it has a little texture to it, I quite like it for drawings. I used it for Inktober for, with all my fountain pens and it worked very well. And uh, the paper is really, really thick, so it's kind of nice too. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Again, stay tuned for more videos. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a series of it and try out different pens and nibs. I've got some coming in um, that I'm really looking forward to try out. So it's an exciting adventure. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.